Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I am so excited for this video. My body is so ready. So if you guys have watched any videos on my channel, you know that I love to react to skincare routines. I love to be nosy and see what celebrities are using in their day-to-day -day skincare routine. And when I was watching this particular video, I was like, Hiram, who the fuck are you to judge other people's skincare routines? I mean, not that I feel like I'm truly judging people. I truthfully am not. Anyone I react to on my channel, I don't have anything personally against. Like if anything, I want the best for them. I want them to succeed and I'm not judging them, but I do judge the formulas of the skincare products that they use, I'll be honest. I'm very particular about what I want in my skincare products. But when I was watching myself react to a routine, I was rolling my eyes and I was like, Hiram, ugh, who are you? Who the hell do you think you are? And I was thinking a lot about my personal journey through skincare and how much I've grown and how much I've learned just in the past year. And it wasn't until I woke up the next day and I realized that I was being overly harsh on myself. But when I woke up, I was like, you know, it would be a lot of fun to bash my own skincare routine. Because like I said, I've learned so much more about skincare than, than even just what I knew a year ago. And so many of my skincare opinions and skincare stances have dramatically changed even just since then. And it helped me realize more. And this is something I always try to think about is that we're all on different journeys when it comes to skincare and everyone has their own skincare opinions and everyone has their own skincare stances. And as we learn more about skincare and as more information comes out about skincare and ingredients, we all grow. We all learn so much more. And that's definitely been the case for me. And I was thinking, you know what, Hiram, you react to all these other people's skincare routines. Why not react to your own and bash the living hell out of it? Because not going to lie, when I think back to my skincare philosophy, even just a year ago, I'm like, very much cringe. And truthfully, I think that's a good sign because if you're not embarrassed by who you were a year ago, then you're not growing, baby. And I've always done the best I can. And I think I've done a good job of being open and receptive to new information, learning more about skincare, being open-minded, but I thought it would be fun to kind of look back into the past and see my own skincare routine, what my skincare opinions were and how they've changed since then. I can already feel the cringe that's gonna come out of this video, but I'm also really excited because I think it'll be an opportunity for me to look back and see how much I've grown and how my skincare philosophy has developed. And no one does a better job of criticizing Hiram than myself. <laughs> I make self-hatred work for me. <laughs> okay, so we are going way back to this video. Man, this is from a long time ago. It's from, when is it? Uh, May 21st, 2019. So almost two years ago. <gasps> it has 1.2 million views. Oh my God, I already feel so much embarrassment. <laughs> oh my God, I did not know it has that many views. I hope I wasn't destroying my skin. We shall see you. Aloha everyone and welcome to oh Skincare boy, with Hiram. If you setup. don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about Let's... Uh, oh, <laughs> and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hey, at least the intro the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. I just oh, barely got a brand new line. This was the pre-shoulder shimmy days. That's how you know this video is old. Can we just look at the setup behind me? First of all, that product arrangement is atrocious. Some of the products I literally turned around so you can't even see what they are. <laughs> also looking at that product selection, I'm like, whoa, you I know this video is old. Oh, and look at my Valentino bag I got for 95% off pretending like I'm some bougie bitch. I don't even know why I had a bag behind me. I literally got that for like 50 bucks. Anyway, I am also surprised that I'm wearing a white shirt, not a blue shirt. If you didn't know I wear a blue shirt in my videos because I film with my phone and every time I wear a different color than blue, it just fucks up the coloring of the video and we can clearly see that here. The lighting and coloring in this video is atrocious. <laughs> I just barely got a brand new Lancome concealer and I don't wear oh, makeup. I don't like wearing why. makeup, but at the same time, every once in a while I'm like you know what I could use a little extra boost on the under eye area no, no you can not it looks awful yeah no I don't like it so I apologize ahead of time but I really didn't want to go through all the trouble of wiping the makeup off you know what, it, I'm gonna do it right now yeah that concealer this looks awful problem. I can't just <laughs> oh my god is that a makeup a wipe like thing of makeup oh no 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 it's a concealer cotton because my face is too damn I was about ready to be canceled I was like when did I use makeup wipes I never used makeup wipes but that was back in the days when I used cotton pads I don't use them anymore see already an instance of growth I yep. either have to go all out like full James Charles <laughs> style or nothing at all <laughs> No words, no words. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my current skincare routine. Now, this isn't really a video that I wanted to do. It's just because you guys have requested it so freaking much. Mm -hmm. And because I love you, I will do it for you. But I do want to say that <laughs> it's I- It's true. I don't like doing really my skincare routine video videos. For a long time. Not because- but you guys love seeing I don't want to share my skincare routine with you guys because I do, but my skincare routine is constantly changing all the time because I'm constantly trying out new products to review for you guys. But nonetheless, since you guys requested it so many 
many times. Here I am with my current skincare routine. I feel like I'm literally one of those memes where it's like, no one, me. So I know a lot of you guys ask about my skincare routine. That's literally me right now, wow. You know, whenever I watch one of my videos, it's always cringe, but every once in a while, I do make myself laugh where I'm like, okay, you know, maybe that was a little funny. So because I am complicated as f and I do not want to conform. My skincare routine is a little bit complicated, but I'm basically gonna organize it by daytime skincare routine and nighttime skincare routine. Oh, I'm routine. doing I'm both. Start with day, go into okay. the night. As for all of the products I'm mentioning, I'm including links in the description box below. A lot of these may be affiliate links and how it works is basically like if you click on these links and then you buy anything on Amazon, then I get a small commission off of it. Hey, even back then I was properly disclosing my affiliate links. Good job, Hiram. <laughs> FTC would be proud. Your boy <laughs> works like 60 hours a week uh, oh, and does yeah. not have a life outside of work. So any extra help would be great um, if you guys do want to help me out. Just disclosing that. Totally up to you, no pressure at all, but if you do want to get any skin- I'm just gonna interject and say, this was at a time where I was just working myself thin. I had my two jobs, I was working 50 hours a week. I would start my day by waking up around 3.30 or 4 a.m. Be at my first shift from like 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. and then I'd have a 30 minute break and then work until 11 p.m. and sometimes midnight. I'd take a bus one hour into town and one hour out of town. So typically I get about three hours of sleep a night. And then I'd spend about 40 hours a week working on YouTube. That was another level of work. I literally had no social life. I was working constantly. I had like no life and I was barely making ends meet. I think when I uploaded this, I had like a few thousand followers. Wow, it's kind of cool to see how times have changed. Wow, it's a little bit heartwarming, not gonna lie. It's kind of cool to look back. I wish I could tell him what was in store and that he was gonna meet all of you amazing people because what an incredible past few years it's been. I am so grateful. Oh, I didn't expect to get all mushy. So my very first step is always, of course, cleansing. And this is going to come as no surprise to you guys. I use the Use to the People cleanser. I'm almost out of this one. And thank gods, I have another bottle ready to use right after this because <laughs> I'm not going without this cleanser. This is freaking amazing. You guys know my thoughts. If you don't, link in the description box below for my thoughts on this cleanser. Sneak peek, it's freaking incredible. <laughs> I've said times have changed so much, but times have not changed that much. Uh, it's still one of my favorite cleansers of all time. You cannot grip this product from my dead, cold, hard hands. I love this cleanser to death. It is my favorite. I've been using it for years. It's amazing. Now for the second step, I've really been wanting to incorporate a morning exfoliant into my skincare routine. However, I've been a little skeptical about using harsh exfoliants because the sun exposure here in Hawaii is really intense and I do not want to get damaged within my skin. However, I've been finding a happy medium with a Amore Pacific treatment. Oh. Enzyme peel. It's not really a brand She's name necessarily bougie. inclined okay. to go for because of the fragrance that they use. However, because it's a wash off treatment, I'm a little bit more forgiving and I found that this is really amazing for just gently exfoliating the skin. It smooths it out, evens the skin tone because of the green tea extract, but doesn't do anything too intense that would increase my irritability from sun exposure. I still have yet to have my final thoughts on this. Let me know if you want a review. Honestly, I'm not too mad at that product. I just think it's really expensive. Like, damn, Hiram. $60 for a wash off exfoliating treatment, a little excessive. I was also kind of disappointed because that product didn't last quite as long as I would have hoped it would, especially for that price point. Overall, Omori Pacific, I just think they're such a luxury brand. Like their products are really, really expensive. And technically that's not a scrub, it's an enzyme powder. So it kind of is like a powder, but as you warm it up in your hands with water, it does like exfoliate the skin. But honestly, nowadays I would not really be inclined to use that one. I mean, Amore Pacific does use high quality green tea from Jeju Island, but you can find a lot of way more affordable Korean skincare products that use the same green tea extract. And being that this isn't even like a cleanser and an exfoliant in one, it's just the exfoliant. I, I mean, I wouldn't buy it now, but I actually do think this kind of shows where I was in the skincare world. At this point in time, I was most familiar with products at stores where you could get samples like Sephora. And that's primarily where I did my shopping because I was able to get a sample beforehand to see if it worked for my skin. If it did, I could buy the product knowing that it was going to be fully effective. And if it didn't work, it was nothing off my shoulder. Now I've opened myself a lot more to online brands and drugstore skincare products. And I always wanna make sure my recommendations are as accessible as possible to anyone, regardless of how much money you make. And I do remember that this video was a key point in time because I do remember the comments from this video saying, whoa, so many of these products are so expensive 
expensive? Can you make more affordable recommendations? And that's really when I started to see the requests coming in asking for me to feature more affordable products. And I think this is one of the videos that triggered the steps into me finding low price, high quality skincare. Because before that, I just counted on the samples. And if the samples worked, I was willing to put the money forward, but not everyone has access to that. And definitely not everyone wants to spend $60 on a wash off treatment. So I'm so grateful that you guys were calling me out and asking for that because nowadays I try to be really, really conscious of that. Now, after I've done both of those steps in the shower, as soon as I get out and dry off, I kind of alternate. What I've been going with for a while is the use of the people oh, from Brighton Serum. Okay. If you don't know about this product, I will also link my video in the description box I forgot below. I used to use that Amazing one. serum, really good, but I have been wanting to try new things because I've been using only this for so long. So I did want to include this because this has been a staple for a while. However, I have transitioned to a few new products. I'm currently using two CauseRx products. Oh, the first being the so 2 one Poreless Power Liquid. It's basically okay. this salicylic acid toner that I do right after I get out of the shower. I like this because it's able to penetrate my pores. Since when did I like using toners? <laughs> I feel like I've never been a toner person. Maybe I was back then. So I use this and I haven't been using it for very long, but so far I've noticed good results. I have. And then mm. I finish off with the CauseRx mm. Snail Mucin Power Essence. People rave about this shit like none other. And I have to say, I can kind of understand why I'm really liking this and it hasn't been blocking my pores. Thank yep. God. No so I kind pores. of alternate between product. those two, depending on what I feel I need most that day. So that's interesting because I forgot I used to use the You To The People Superfood Serum. Um, I was a fan of that one primarily because the texture, it's super lightweight, is absorbed by the skin really quickly. Um, one of the reasons I stopped using that product is because I saw that natural fragrance was listed in the ingredient list. And what I had been told is that it was just a signifying mark for the different types of plant extracts that they use in the products. However, now I know that that actually wasn't the case and that You To The People, I believe, does use different types of essential oils or fragrant components, which I now classify as fragrance. Back then I tried to avoid fragrance as a term, but I really wasn't familiar with the sensitivity that fragrant essential oils and fragrant components can cause. And I feel like it wasn't that long ago where I actually tried that product again, just on my hand and I smelled it. And the fragrance smelled way stronger than what it used to be. So I don't know if they've reformulated it or maybe my nose just wasn't as sensitive back then, but I ended up stopping using that product because of the fragrant components included in it. To be honest, I don't even know if that product is still on the market anymore. They may have discontinued it because they recently came out with their new vitamin C serum. But yeah, I remember being so disappointed when I found that out, but no worries. I still have my cleanser that I love. <laughs> but as for the other two products, I remember trying out the poreless liquid and I honestly didn't really love it. I liked the ingredients, but I didn't notice any like major results or anything that was like really pushing me to continue using that product. However, the snail mucin essence from CauseRx is amaze balls. I haven't used that one in the day in a long time. And I'm honestly surprised that I did use it in my daytime routine because it's more heavy. But at nighttime, I definitely love using that one. I combined three different products at once. Now I've been using the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream for a while. It's really good. And as we're coming into summer, I'm gonna have to transition out of it. But for the sake of this video, this is the one. And basically what I do is I create a little concoction, a little a Oh my God, I forgot I of used products to this. Just so oh. I can get even application across my face because sunscreen is arguably the most important part of your skincare routine. And you wanna make sure you get that even application. I forgot I used to do over. this. I Man, do this is a disaster. <laughs> and then I follow up with this sheer zinc dry touch sunscreen SPF 50 mm -hmm. from Neutrogena. Which is really a good like sunscreen. It, it only the white cast is really intense. An it's amazing good sunscreen. sunscreen for the face. I do a little squirt of that. Squirt. <laughs> And then I if there's been any reason for you to block me in my career, that's your 13th reason. Okay, just wait, it gets worse. I totally forgot I used to do this. Oh my gosh, this is like one of the biggest mistakes I think I've made. And then I follow up with a pump of the Deep Bronzy Anti-Pollution sun, sun, uh, Sunshine Serum. Now, if you guys haven't seen my video on this, I really like it because it offsets the white cast that you can get from using a mineral sunscreen. And why do we want to use mineral sunscreen? Because it doesn't kill ocean reefs. Yay! Before I get into the disaster that is my concoction of different skin care products. Um, addressing the coral reef issue, I have since learned that there is some controversy surrounding the legitimacy of the studies that have been performed in regards to the toxicity of chemical UV filters. So I don't like to outright say chemical UV filters kill coral reefs because there is that level of skepticism and there needs to be more research done. And those studies have been highly questioned by most cosmetic chemists that I know. So looking back, I mean, at that point, I was friends with people who had performed some of those studies, but since then I've really been able to step back and see what 
the overall perspective is and I understand the concern and I understand why people are really skeptical. However, I still don't use chemical UV filters because they can still be irritating to sensitive skin and because of the possible risk to coral reefs. And my position I take now is that I don't know if they cause coral reef damage. There needs to be more research around that. I'm just not going to use them or recommend them on the chance that they could be causing coral reef damage because I live in Hawaii. I see the impact of so many different things like global warming, tourism, sunscreen in the oceans, and I want to be really sensitive to that. But I totally understand the skepticism and why people continue to use chemical UV filters. That's just my stance I've taken. And honestly, I think it's better because it's just better to not deal with the possible sensitivity and irritation you can get from using chemical UV filters. But yeah, I've learned a lot since then. Anyway, let's continue with this shit show because it gets worse. Anyway, after all those pumps, I mix it together. That's why the top of this looks like um, something I will not say. I mix it all together and then I apply it evenly across my face. It looks so good because the bronziness mixed with the sunscreen creates like the perfect light coverage canvas. It basically looks like I'm using a tinted moisturizer on my face. What was I doing? What was I doing? So I thought it was such a brilliant idea to mix my moisturizer, mix the bronzing tint and mix my sunscreen all together in order to help avoid the white that sunscreen typically brings. You should not be mixing your skincare products together because first off, it can really impact the effectiveness of the actual ingredients in the formulas and the formulations are not made to be mixed with another formula. So you really don't know what kind of mixture you're creating and what it will or won't do to your skin. Sunscreen needs to be applied as the last step of your skincare routine and it should not be mixed with your moisturizer. That is a big no-no. The reason being, sunscreens are very carefully formulated to be able to ensure that as you spread it across your skin, it is creating an even layer across your skin of those particles that help to protect your skin from the sun, not be impacted by anything and have an even application across your entire face. When you mix a sunscreen with your moisturizer, you are asking, practically begging for the sunscreen formula to not be effective anymore because it's hindering and affecting the protective performance of the actual sunscreen. And that's why now I always say that sunscreen has to be the last step of your skincare routine. Not mixed with your moisturizer, not applied before your moisturizer, it should be the last step because you don't want to do anything that could impact the protective ability. I mean, I'm a little glad that I at least was using sunscreen. That's the only thing I can give myself. But thankfully, I remember you guys called me out hard in this video or Maybe it was a few videos after, I can't remember. You guys really called me out for mixing a sunscreen with your moisturizer and told me not to do that anymore. It took a little while and I stopped doing that. The best solution is just to use a sunscreen that doesn't have a severe white cast. I happen to be using a sunscreen that, while it is a good formula, has one of the most severe white casts I have ever seen in a sunscreen. Like that one's really intense. Like Mark Zuckerberg's surfing intense. And the best option is just to use a sunscreen that doesn't have as intense of a white cast. There are literally so many sunscreens I could recommend. I even have some in front of me. There's the Kinship Probiotic, self-reflect sunscreen. I love this one. It was even included in my kinship kit that I did. There's the Biosan Squalane and Zinc sunscreen. This one works on so many skin tones and you do have to blend it in a little bit, but once it's blended in, there's no white cast. My recent love, the Bliss Box Star SPF 30. As you can see, the bottle is empty because I've gone through four bottles now. Or even a recent favorite, which is kind of luxury, but a really good product, the Venus Williams Sun Serum. All these sunscreens have little to no white cast and perform way better than what I used to use. <laughs> and then last Lastly, I think it is interesting to look back and see how integrated Drunk Elephant was in my videos because at that point in time, I was recommending Drunk Elephant and God near every single video. How times have changed. But looking at this routine, I'm like, damn girl, this is adding up. This is expensive. I think I'm already at like the 200, maybe $300 price point with this skincare routine just for daytime. Well, uh, I've learned a lot since then. <laughs> I'd say that's my biggest mistake in this video so far. I haven't even finished the video and I know that's my biggest mistake. And then the final step is the target. Guard oh, SPF 30 yes. powder. I, I do remember this these afterwards days. to make sure that everything's set in. I don't look greasy or oily. And then I touch up with this throughout the day. If you haven't seen my video of this, you can go and watch it. It's just a great product for making sure that you're getting consistent sunscreen protection throughout the day because just doing sunscreen in the morning is not going to take care of you all day, sweetie. That only takes care Very of you true. for a few hours. And then you have to touch up afterwards. And I think the powder is a great way to do that, especially if you have oily skin or it's humid. Oh. I lived and swore by that product back then. I really liked it. And honestly, I still think it's a good product. The reason I loved it is because at one of my jobs, I was constantly like on the move, going, running, racing around, and I have to be outside a lot. So I would be dripping in sweat. So using that powder would kind of be a great way of helping to absorb the excess sweat and sebum on my face. And it, yes, was a good way of reapplying sunscreen. It's still way better to use your normal sunscreen or to use a lightweight sunscreen product like this to reapply because you're getting way more protection than 
than you would with a powder. But a powder is a really nice way to simultaneously touch up the sebum and oil on your skin while also getting some mild sun protective abilities. So I still think it's great. I honestly don't use it as much anymore because thank God I don't work in that job anymore. <laughs> so I don't produce oil and sweat as much and I typically use a cream sunscreen to reapply. But I mean, it's a great product. I think it's really innovative. Oh my gosh, I forgot the eye cream. Okay, so for oh. eye cream, for a long time, I've been going with the Power Wrinkle Fighter Eye <laughs> Serum from Algenist. It's a serum, but it feels like an eye cream. $70? Really it's not very heavy. I've been using this for a long time. I love it, but I've been trying to transition it up for you guys. And I've been using the Inkey List Caffeine okay. Eye Cream. Okay, um, I've only that's, been using that's this a little better. So far, the results are good, but we will see what will be coming. Get ready for a brand review on this brand. I meant to say video on this wow. brand. Get ready for a video on the Inkey List because it's coming. Wow, so this was pre-Inkey List days. Dang. I swear to God, Inkey List is like in every single one of my videos. I'm always recommending their products. Um, Hiram, hello. What the hell is wrong with you spending $70 on an eye cream? Jesus Christ, that's ridiculous. Why would I do that? Why would I spend $70 on an eye product? It is so not worth it. I think this may have been before the days that I realized that eye cream isn't necessary in a skincare routine. And especially for a product like that, like it's not even one that necessarily treats dark circles or has a corrective tint or has retinol. It's more so just like a hydrating and plumping eye cream. So I don't know why I was so convinced to spend that much money. I mean, I remember the experience was nice. I did enjoy the experience, but what the hell is wrong with you? The caffeine eye cream is way better than that one. Uh, you're getting way more bang for your buck. It basically does the same thing. And even nowadays, I don't think I spend over 45 for an eye cream. That's like the, the top of what I will usually pay for an eye cream. I can't think of any reason. And I would spend more than that, especially for a step of the skincare routine that's not even necessary. I use eye cream now, but my eye creams have very particular benefits. Like I'm not gonna use like a dark spot solution for my entire face. I'm gonna use it for my under eye area where I do struggle with dark circles. Or I'm gonna use like one of my favorite eye creams, the First Aid Beauty Niacinamide eye cream, because it has this corrective tint that helps to kind of diffuse the darkness on the under eye area while still not being makeup. Like I can't find that in another product. But for an eye cream like that, hell no. I would go into the nighttime routine, but I've already been filming for an hour. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, if you guys do want a nighttime routine reaction video, I am happy to make one. Just let me know because I can totally do a part two to this video. Ugh, but what are my overall thoughts? Wow, it's crazy to see how much my skincare philosophy has changed since then. In a way though, it is a little comforting to look back at where I was and see where I am now. Not that I still don't need help now because God, I'm still learning every day. But I do think it's cool to look back and see how much I've learned since then. How much the skincare industry and skincare community has taught because like the sunscreen concoction fiasco, at that point, I truly had no idea. And it's thanks to you guys, people who are watching, people who are messaging and commenting that I realized, oh shoot, I shouldn't do that anymore. And it's really gonna impact the health of my skin. And it's cool to look back because it makes me so grateful that I've been able to build this platform and feel so much love from this amazing community. You guys have been the primary reason that I've pushed myself to learn more. Even back then, I love to see when you guys were in the comment sections telling me, Hiram, you're doing this wrong, you need to fix this. Or Hiram, you're not educated enough about this. You need to learn more about this ingredient or this topic. And even though sometimes it does feel a little bit harsh, and I mean, no one likes to hear necessarily that they're wrong, I've always been someone who wants to know if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm doing something incorrect so that I can fix it as fast as possible, and also spread the message on my channel so that no one makes the same mistakes as me. And it's been so amazing to see the growth because of all of you guys. Like, it's so cool, and I feel so lucky to be able to have you guys as a resource to be able to help keep me on track, not spread misinformation, share what I've learned, and it's created this really cool dynamic that honestly, Honestly, I'm grateful for every day. And even though, yes, that was a bit of a disaster, like I said, if you aren't embarrassed by who you were a few years ago, then you're not growing, you know? It is kind of cool to look back and see at what position in life I was at then, what I was struggling with, how much I was working, how overworked I was, how I never relaxed, I never had any free time, I never let myself take a break. And to see where I am now, where there's a lot more balance, a lot less pressure, a lot less stress, and I'm in just such a happier place. And again, that's only possible because of you guys. So if there's anything to learn from this video, it's that you guys are f***ing awesome. I love you all. Thank you for helping to continually educate me. I'm so grateful for the amount of knowledge that I was able to gain from working in the industry, but I'm also so grateful for all the knowledge that I learned from you guys. And to be honest, I expected to bash myself a lot more. <laughs> I was ready to go all in, bitch. But that was kind of fun looking back and just, you know, seeing the growth. If you guys do want to see a reaction video to my nighttime routine that I did in the rest of this video, let me know because I have no idea if that's going to be worse or better. I honestly can't remember. But let me know. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.